Hello all. Welcome to another part. I think this is part 11, if I'm losing count at this stage. But uh, this is a wee bit of work that we've been doing in the past few days. Uh, I suppose, where do we start? Um, hedges are cut. Uh, it was good. We've got a lot of hedges cut. We couldn't go into the fields. Storm Brendan left them that the fields are absolutely swimming. Um, real mess. Just at a time of year when, you know, the week before last, I was walking through the fields and I couldn't believe how dry they were. And now they're soaking. Um, although it was a good frost this morning. That's see, we bit of a frost for a change. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of, no real damage. No real damage done. I hope there's no damage done with you either. It was fairly rough for, for, for a while. Um, but the amount of rain that fell was phenomenal around here, around these parts anyway. But yeah, as you can see, a little bit of landscaping done. Um, so what we've done was we've got a few loads of gravel and this is what I was telling you before about putting um, pass in here. I, I, I've, I think it, it should work out well. We have a nice torn in space there for silo stairs and things to go in. We'd probably mount a gate. Um, you won't put a gate here at all. We'd probably put a gate here in here at the end and put a post just in there and then put a nice fence the whole way along the core of that there and down to that tree. Uh, I put a... a, a Look, I, I said to the man that was doing the digging, um, maybe put a little bit of a drain or something there, and he did. And then when I came over and looked at it after, I thought to myself, I wonder did we actually need it. But if there's much water running out of it, what I probably will do is I will probably um, f dig it deeper and put a pipe in it and fill it with shore and stone. And just leave it. Don't, don't put topsoil on or nothing. Just fill it to the top with shore and stone. It might look tidier then. Um, and just catch any water that might run out of here because we put quite a little bit of topsoil on that there. And, but everything worked out so nice and uh, it makes a big difference to the site. I don't know what it shows like on a video, but when you're here in person, it does make a big difference to the site. ESB, we have a pole, we have a stay, we have ducting in, um, and we have poles down through our field. Our silage man is going to love that because that is that is our one of our silage fields. Um, and it's nice to have a field that you can just fly around without it having any obstacles in it. And unfortunately now we have two. That third one isn't actually in the field at the, at the bottom. It's down in the next field. So there's two in it. Look at nothing you can do about that. We need to get power here. So they have a lot of work, hell of a lot of work to do yet. As I said, I don't know if you're not watching our videos beforehand, they have to go all the way up nearly to that yellow house up there. Well almost that far. So you can kind of see them other poles kind of in the in the way in the distance. So they'll have to go up and link onto them. So there's a lot of poles to go in yet. We're told it'll all be finished for the end of the month. That's not fine that coming, so I'm hoping I'm hoping they will have a lot of that done because um I want power, definitely want power in the shed. I have a lot of welding and things to do yet and the generator's just not the generator that I had just isn't isn't fit for that. Isn't fit to run the welder strong enough. So a lot of topsoil. A lot of topsoil, never a bad complaint. But in this case, um we probably have too much of it. We'll probably end up um, getting rid of some of this um, in the springtime because um, trying to fill up hollows and things like that. I don't really want to have to bother doing that. Uh, these fields will all be sowed in, in, in late March, early April for silage and I don't want to be tramping through them. But I do want them kind of gone and I want to get this back into shape uh, so we can maybe get a second cut off it. First cut will be, it'll not happen off this wee section, but we'll get a second cut off it, um, definitely. Uh, so progress is good. The curved wall, as you've seen before, was definitely um, made a big improvement to it. The ducting. Anyone that's putting ducting, there's bound to be easy ways of doing it. I know there is different techniques, but we done it old school and we run a wire, a high tense wire down a 50 meter um, ducting pipe, as you see there. So then we could tie on our rope and pull a rope back through it. Oh, what a nightmare of a job. I absolutely hate it. It took so long to get it for the two of us to get that done. Um, so, yeah, it's not something I'd like to do every day, but I know there is other techniques. We just didn't know how at the time, and uh, we did it old school, as they say. So we have plenty of little bits of ducting left over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of joiners, and I'm going to run it, use this ducting to go underneath a few gaps and passes to bring our electric fence. I think it'd be good. It'd be a good job. It's very, very strong, and we're going to just use that to go underneath the gate so that nothing can damage the wire for the new electric fence when we when we put it in. But you can see here there was this was a peg, an orange peg down on the ground, and that was originally where the ESB had marked for the pole to go. Now I wasn't dying about that because it's far away from the shed and it's also under a tree, which you know 
you know, trees. Eventually, it's going to fall. And it was very close to it. And I didn't realize, I didn't understand why it had to be so far away from it. So, thankfully enough, the ESB were very accommodating and they moved the pole up closer to the house. Um, it'll be kind of in line with the fence. So, there'll be a bit of a stay out in the field in, a, in, an, in an angle in the corner. So, nothing you can do about it. It has to go in unless you put in one of them steel posts. Um, I suppose you, you could put in one of these steel posts that was mentioned to me. Uh, but we didn't. It's not going to make a huge difference. Um, that stay will not cause much trouble whatsoever. It's not especially in the angle that it's in because it's kind of going with the curve. So there's just the remnants of the old gate. That was just where we used to latch it to there, and then we it was hung here somewhere. So that'll be all closed up, taken away now, and fenced cleanly up, up to there. And it just it just cleans the whole thing up a little bit. Leaves it. It definitely left it. Um, giving me better ideas now what I, what I could. What I can do with it because I still have other things I'm learning as I go along and, and thinking of different things as I go along that I can do to the f in the future to this this shed and some of you who haven't watched uh, some of our early episodes of this um, a lot of people ask me why did I not roof this piece here you know well, just as I was saying before my intention is to roof it but the way I want to roof it just doesn't work with grand spec and um, so it'll not be roofed for a while yet um, it's just going to stay as it is. It's going to for, it's going to actually serve a brilliant purpose because now in early March, mid March, I'm going to bring over the, ca the heifer calves that are old enough, and I'm going to put them all in here, and I'm going to open that door and I put my trot in there, and um, I leave the door open and then go in and out. Then there's loads of room to run around, and they're not. It, it's easier for me to feed them. They can have their silage here, and the trot will be there. The drink will be there, and everything, and it gives them a bit of room. Like calves do take up an awful lot of space at home um, and uh, when I get them out and get them in here that's going to free up an awful lot of space for me because I just know from years, years gone by that is, can be a headache when you get into March and so and you're really really packed with calves um, that's when I'd like to clear out a few of them so getting them over here, getting them ready to nearly go out for a few weeks just over here um, will be brilliant. This gate here See, I don't know, as I said to you before, I might take that gate off and I might hang a small calf barrier for calves to feed here as well. I don't know, but for now, this is going to be adequate. Um, they won't be fit to jump through it. Uh, for the reason being is they'll be obviously bigger, but we, what I will do is I'll run just a piece of timber from there to there and screw it onto the bars, a flat piece of timber, just high enough to stop them from jumping. And we do that at home. It's quite easy, works 100%. So the cattle just finished their meal here. They're after being clipped there a few days ago. Made a big difference to them. Uh, you remember I had a problem with crows. Well, I um, had a problem. I had a quite a big problem with them. Um, to say they were going in, they were eating the meal, they were destroying the silage. Well, that problem seems to be solved. I came over here and I shot quite a few of them. Um, I had no other option. I tried everything else. Nothing else was working. They were absolutely destroying the feed, destroying the cubicles. Uh, cattle were actually afraid of the grey crows. They were cornered in the shed one particular day I came over and there was about 10 or 11 grey crows in on the slats with the cattle all hemmed up in the cubicles. So I said, no, that's enough of that. So I went home, set the whole place up. I hid up in the middle of the bales and lo and behold, they came fairly fast and we shot quite a few of them and the rest of them seemed to be well scared off. I know the next day I came over again when I was coming up in the quad, there was a few crows that flew out of the shed. But... I said to myself, I'm going to have to come back here and do a few more days on it. But um, ever since that, that's about two weeks ago now, ever since that, nothing. They've seemed to, be, seemed to have got the message. The, there's no more, no, no more remnants of any, of any, any board fouling or any um, dirt on the, on the bars or anything where they're lighting. Everything seems to be dried up. Doesn't seem to be any problem now. So it seems to have done the trick for now. So... Um, Look, it's the last resort to shooting them, but you have to protect your animals, you have to protect your feed, and you have to eliminate any any present of disease that can be that can be passed on from them. This time, uh, hopefully, with more to show you in the coming weeks, ESB will hopefully have disconnected. We'll have lights on, we'll have camera up, a few bits and pieces to come. We didn't put on our head gate yet, as you can see, but I'm not doing any of that kind of work now until um, that we get power because the. As I said before, the generator is just not strong enough and that's one job you really want to make sure you do right. So um, I've it all planned out and I know exactly now how it's going to how it's gonna go on. And I thank you for everybody who did comment and give, give advice on Instagram and YouTube on how it's to be done. But loads of photos and things like that. 
it's brilliant the response response from from youtube and things like that it's just brilliant it opens up a whole new world and we're just realizing that now so any of you that haven't subscribed already please do so and thank you to everyone that has subscribed liked or commented on any of our videos um it's all appreciated i think we're at nearly almost heading for the 5000 mark now i think you know from the last time i was talking um that we never never expected this to happen not for a long long time if we kept going but uh, yeah it has really really helped us a lot and um, it's really given me the kick and the orders to come along and make better videos and um, put more time into it so i appreciate it all until then folks we will talk to you very soon